So today is our seven months on the road, which is an exciting milestone. Today we also woke up to our fridge not working and Max is outside sorting that right now. And I'm just cleaning inside the shelf because salt spilt everywhere while we were driving. You can see salt in there. So stuff like that happens on the road. Hi guys, welcome back to our channel. Or if you haven't seen our videos before, I'm Max. I'm Lee. And this is Oki. <laughs> this week we travel through the state of Chiapas in Mexico. And we're gonna show you a little bit of the footage of what we got up to at the end of the video. For today's topic, what we wanna talk to you guys about is the downsides of living in a van. Yeah, more the reality. The reality of it all. We show you guys all the best parts because that's what we get really excited about and forget that the day-to-day -day living is still abnormal to anybody else who doesn't live in a van, so we want to give you a bit more of an insight. So here we go. All right, so our first point is the biggest transition from moving from a house into a van is lack of personal space. Now, we've gotten used to this very quickly. We both have backpacked together and we've lived together, so we're used to operating around the same speed. Um, little ways around it is in the kitchen, for example, we decided that one person in the kitchen at a time is enough, the other can sit on the couch, same for getting dressed in the closet. One person in the closet is enough at a time. How do you feel? Uh, yeah, you essentially you're not going to have any secrets from anyone. Uh, sorry. From each other. You're not going to have any other. secrets from each other. Uh, <laughs> so you've got to get used to being able to live in a super small space. Mm -hmm. And yeah, worst case, if we really want personal space, one of us can leave the van, or go to a cafe, or go to a park. But yeah. it so, doesn't happen very often. Yeah, so. surprisingly. We've been fine with it. Oki, we've got to remember, is his own being as well, mm -hmm. and sometimes he needs a bit of personal space, and he might yeah. move to the front section for a bit and stare out the window. But yeah, yeah, I think I think we right cope now. pretty well. Yeah. So that brings us into our second point. Yep. So for number two, uh, is no toilet or shower, and that we've had a lot of people ask us about that. We haven't found it too big an issue ourselves. We actually initially had a porta potty when we started this trip, and for the first four months, we didn't use it. It stayed in the wrapping, and then when we got to Baja, California, we actually gave it away to a family that was traveling in a bus that needed it. Because generally, if you're around cities or towns, there's always public washrooms open. And then if you happen to be remote enough that there's not, it means it's a perfect opportunity to grab your shovel and go bush. and we got used to doing that pretty quick and especially in Mexico you find yourself doing that a bit more often while you're camping yeah. and it's not an issue for us. In terms of shower, we still have we have a solar shower bag that we do use but I think ev anyone that lives in a van ha has to get used to the fact that they're going to shower less frequently, yeah. they're going to smell a little bit more. Your feet are going to get dirty. <laughs> Your feet are going to get dirty. Uh, you don't have a washing machine everywhere with you, so yeah. you're going to have to go through all your clothes until you're ready to take it to the laundromat and wash it. Yeah. There's adjustments to be made and, and you're not going to have the same type of cleanliness. Yeah, and you might not you have you might not have the same kind of routine that you had at home. like. Mm -hmm. I know a lot of girls especially like to wash their hair every day. Yeah. It's just we not really wash our hair very <laughs> It's just not really very practical in a van. Like if you feel you need to wash your hair every day, maybe van life's not for you. It's or you can wash it in the sink, but it's no, just but gonna it's be a different experience. The amount of water you're using is yeah. it's not worth it, yeah. so you'll get to know. Unless that. you park somewhere with a full hook up, it's just not practical. Yeah. So that brings us on to our third topic now. Um, where are you gonna sleep every night? That's a huge adjustment when you first get in the van because you're not used to the, your house constantly moving. And around two, three o'clock in the afternoon, we always start thinking, okay, the sun's gonna be going down in a few hours. Where are we gonna set up for the night? Sometimes it's easier than others to find a great camp spot. Sometimes, right now, we're filming at a McDonald's because that's a quiet spot for us. So you get, you get used to picking and choosing where you're gonna sleep. Um, Finding places that are comfortable, as we've mentioned before, we use the IO Lander app that does help us find better camp spots. We also just tug off onto the side of highways, we park at rest stations. Yeah. We got really comfortable after a few weeks doing so, and now we really don't mind parking 
for sure. And I think a big thing asleep. with that, guys, is make sure you insulate your van properly. Yes. We spend ages insulating our van, and it's the sound difference between the doors being closed or open is huge. Uh, you often don't even notice cars driving past if you are pulled off on the side of the road. So definitely something worthwhile putting the time and effort into. As well, one more mention is that we do have blackout curtains for all the windows. So when we close up shop, you can't tell that there's anybody in the vehicle at all. And that gives us a good peace of mind for sleeping. Yeah. Um, and then if somebody does try to break in, you are in your vehicle and you can get your bear spray and you can, you know, deal with that if that happened. But that hasn't happened to us yet, so. Yeah. So number four is getting sick in the van. Uh, on this trip where we were actually seven months yesterday into the trip, and both of us have been lucky enough to only have gotten sick once. I think if we were in normal daily life, we probably would have got sick at least once as well. The difference being in the van is you, you don't have those creature comforts like we talked about, toilet and shower, so accessible. And when you're sick, you really do notice that. I think especially when Lee was sick, she was sick for a bit longer. Um, it's hard because our, because we don't have a permanent bed, you know, during the day we want to make it into a couch. All she wants to do is lie down. You know, our fridge is under the bed, so we need access to that. Yeah, so our best piece of advice, if you get sick while you're traveling on the road, spend the money and get a private room at yeah. hostel or get a hotel for the night. Down here in Mexico, it's actually really affordable to get a room. Yeah. It was just me trying to tough it out, and next time I will not tough it out. I yeah. will next time we'll, we'll get a room and yeah. just have those comforts for yeah. the night. Even air conditioning, it was 40 degrees when I was sick, and I had a fever, and I just was melting, essentially. Yeah. Um, so that brings us to our fifth point, which is getting cabin fever in bad weather. Um, the van is small, it's 40 square feet, but we only actually utilize from the back seats back. Uh, so we don't have a lot of space when it's crappy weather and it's raining outside and you don't want to go out there because there's nothing to do in the pouring rain. Um, luckily that hasn't happened to us too much. We got some poor weather in the Pacific Northwest uh, going through Oregon and Washington. That was the longest stretch and so we just put in kilometers and drove. Yeah. But as for the downtime, like we both like to read and when you're traveling as far as we're traveling, you don't feel like you have as much downtime or we yeah. don't feel like we have as much downtime and because we're constantly seeing new places or moving to a new place so we actually enjoy that yeah it downtime. might it might kind of sound weird if you haven't done a long trip before but sometimes you need a day off yeah. from your trip and yeah. and the occasional rain day is is, is, is nice. actually nice Oki yeah. enjoys it too yeah. he's you know he's getting on he's over seven years old and mm -hmm. I think when we were doing so much hiking and everything, he kind of liked to chill out day in the van where we'd read and not do too much. Yeah. And one of the reasons we made the van so nice on the inside was so that when we do want to shut it up, whether it be in bad weather or we're in a city, that we can shut it up and it feels like home to us and we feel really comfortable. Yeah. As Max mentioned in our van tour, with the fan that we chose to buy, we can leave it open while it's pouring rain and the water doesn't come in. Yeah. That's huge as well if we're shut up in here all day long because we can still cook and have all the steam go out the top of the fan yeah. and it just ventilates the area. So we don't feel too crammed in here because we are very comfortable. Definitely, yeah. Awesome, so that brings us to number six. Okay, so I, I did just mention cities. We are both not super city people. Um, I myself especially prefer being out in the country, being able to do a lot more outdoor activities. And I feel like van life itself, when you're on a budget and you're not earning money like we are, it's not conducive with the city lifestyle of the main activities being eating out, you know, spending money essentially, maybe going to a museum, we, we know there's a lot of free things to do, but the majority of it involves spending some money and... With us having a dog too, a lot of restaurants in Canada and the States don't let you bring your dog in with you. Yeah. In Mexico, a lot of places do, which is really cool. Yeah. Um, but as for cities as well, sleeping is just a little bit tricker, trickier than if you're out of a city. You can find a lot more quiet spots to sleep. In a city, you're gonna have to compromise a little bit more and a lot of times we feel most safe at a Walmart or a McDonald's or in in neighborhoods even where yeah. there's other people's own personal cars on the streets. Yeah. So 
for us, cities is, is a downside of van life in that we don't like to spend a lot of time in there. We normally pass through pretty quick. We understand- There's traffic, there's a lot of traffic and- Yeah, we understand some people love cities and yeah. that may be one of the main reasons they want to travel around. Yeah. Um, but that's all just personal, personal preference. Yeah, so that brings us to our seventh point, which we both feel is more prominent in cities as well. And that's when you park your van and leave it for a few hours. Um, most of the time, the longest we've actually left our van is for a hike, which would be about five, six hours at the most. Yeah. Um, but there's that little tiny bit of anxiety that we both feel, and not even necessarily like we're having an anxiety attack at, by any means, but it's just a worry in the back of our mind that of the worst could happen, the van's gone when we get back. And yeah. it's just because we live with less and we choose to put just what's important into our van, therefore we're more attached to what, what we chose to live with. and it would just be the worst case scenario to have it gone. Yeah, I, and I don't think that's just cities. I think because theft rate and stuff's generally high there, it's worse in the city. But even, you know, a hike in the middle of nowhere, you worry that your van's gonna get broken into and things yeah. are gonna go or, or, or whatever. Um, Ways to prevent it are... Yeah, so, so the things we do to prevent that and offset kind of make us feel a bit better about leaving the van is we installed an alarm in the van. We also have dark tinted windows we put up the reflective shield in the front we and we nothing in the front yeah and we, we close all, all the bibles. curtains yeah so it's it's not obvious at all that we're hauling around a lot of expensive gear mm -hmm. and in saying all that i think the key is just you know whatever happens is going to happen just try and enjoy the moment you're in and so far you know seven months in touch wood wood uh we haven't had any, any break-ins or issues like that? Uh, well, well we, not we have <laughs> not in Mexico. We've had our bike stolen from London, Ontario, and Canada. But that's that another was on story. The second night of our trip, but that's the whole other story. That's another story, and that was on the outside of the van. So. Yeah. Uh, so that brings us to our eighth point, which is van maintenance. Van maintenance, just like house maintenance at home, um, things are going to break and things need to be fixed. However, it just seems to be so much more imperative if it breaks while you're on the road because you have such less things to live with that you utilize everything that you have and if one thing breaks it's just better to fix it for us right away otherwise it's looming over our heads or it's stopping us from getting places worst case scenario is if your van doesn't want to go anywhere you're not going anywhere and likely if it needs to be in a shop for a day which thankfully we haven't had to hand our van over for too long a period of time it means that you have to get out of your house bring all your stuff and potentially get a hotel or, or yeah. figure out a ways around that and some mechanics will be good like we've heard a lot of mechanics in Mexico letting people stay with their van overnight yeah. and things like that so it's definitely a bummer if it happens and I don't know I guess just hope that if your van does break down it's in a nice location because it's definitely not guaranteed yeah. um, but in saying that I think an essential for van life is at least if you're traveling with two people or on your own at least one of you in the van has to become a bit mechanically handy, bring some tools, learn as much as you can about your van. <laughs> learn as much as you can about your van. I knew nothing about mechanics before buying a Sprinter and I've learned everything on YouTube, everything online and we've been able to fix quite a few of the problems that have saved us a lot of money and got us back on the road quicker. Uh, so that brings us to our ninth point which is living in a small space, predominantly outside, you track a lot of dirt, sand, and we have a big fluffy dog that tracks in a lot of hair and whatever the else he touches outside. Uh, so the van gets dirty very quick, but the upside to that is that every single day we wake up and we put our bed back into a couch, we shake out the sheets, we grab the broom, we sweep out the dirt. It takes such little time to bring it back to its full cleanliness as well. Yeah. So it gets dirty quick, but you can clean it up very quick. Yeah. So to us, it doesn't like we don't care if people come in and they say oh sorry I'll take my shoes off like we don't care we designed an open um, living space so that we can walk through with shoes yeah. we don't want to feel like we can't enjoy our own house if we've been outside and step inside like we don't wear yeah. shoes a lot so finally number 10 uh, this one I think is definitely a downside of being in a van for us and we're we're super conscious of it but it's it's the lack of ability or much harder to be able to recycle and compost all our rubbish in saying that we being in a van we we feel we produce a hell of a lot less rubbish 
um, and we try to cut down, you know, we don't grab extra plastic bags for fruit and veg or, or whatever in the store. And being able to come straight from the supermarket and unload everything straight into your pantry in the car park, you, you can- not need as many bags. Exactly, you can kind of reduce the amount of bags you need. But if anyone has any suggestions on how to compost in a van, we've found a few issues with, we've tried to think of ideas and problem is moisture have, and- Well, and we don't have a lot of extra space. Like, yeah. At the moment, our everything has everything we have has a purpose and a, split, a space. And yeah, yeah. It's it's sad because we go through a lot of fruits and vegetables, and a lot of that gets thrown in the garbage. Down here in Mexico, in the states and Canada, we were able to recycle no problem because there's public recycling bins everywhere. So we would just store it all, push it around the van as we don't need it, and then finally recycle it when we can. But compost, we haven't figured out a better way, um, a way of doing it, and. In Mexico, unfortunately, the infrastructure is not here for recycling, and even the infrastructure for garbage is not here as much. So we try to pick up garbage any campsite that we go to where other people have left garbage around. We try to pick it up and we put it in a bag and we dump, dump it in a garbage can, but unfortunately, it's not always reliable that that garbage is no. properly disposed. Yeah. But there's that's a whole country yeah. issue. That's not so anyway, sorry. Enough about that. That's a that's okay. But. Um, if you do have any ideas or suggestions, yeah, feel free to, to hear them. put them in the comments, comments below, for sure. Yeah. We hope that what we chose to talk about today can give you or paint you a better full picture of how we live in the van, the up downsides as well as yeah. the upsides, which is what Definitely, we Definitely, and you know, if you're thinking about moving into a van or some form of tiny home, I, I hope it gives you a bit more of things to consider when you're doing it. Mm -hmm. Some people don't think about some of the small sacrifices they make, but yeah. in our eyes, they're, they're nothing compared to what you gain from van life. Yeah, and small sacrifices to us. Yeah. yeah, exactly. The, yeah. the downsides are far outweighed by the positives and we absolutely love it. That's why we're trying to extend the amount of time we can travel. Initially, we wanted to go for one year. We're seven months in and we're looking at, you know, going for much longer if, if we can try and find a way to sustainably do it. Yeah. Yeah. And that's a wrap for today's video guys. Thank you for taking the time to watch it. If you have any feedback for us, please leave it in the comments below. Give us a thumbs up if you liked what we talked about. If you have any more downsides that you feel living in a van, please share them on our page. Yeah. We'd love to interact with you and, and just discuss and talk about that stuff. Yeah, we've loved reading all the comments below yeah, the videos. Yeah, we have fun with it. It's, and we've tried to yeah. get back to as many people as yeah. we can. Yeah, we are on the road yeah. and we don't always have Wi-Fi, so yeah. we don't get back very prompt, but we try to get back. But yeah, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Yeah, and for next week, we're going to be talking about international travel with the dog. We're going to talk about how Oki made it from Australia to Canada and is now currently in his fourth country. So get on board. Stay tuned. Bye.